this morning, uh, I want uh, to very quickly uh, bring you through some thoughts about how the work works, how to work the works of God or how the work of God works. Number one, begin with whatever comes out from God's mouth. If you ever want to work the works of God, especially in difficult times and problematic situations, uh, you must begin with whatever. See, the Bible says, and Jesus said to the devil, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? So what came out of Jesus' mouth that day was his spit. You with me? He began with his spit. And whatever comes out from God's mouth, even if it's a spit, is going to be good. So always begin with whatever comes out from God's mouth and that's how it started. Out of Jesus' mouth came something. And some of us might go like, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's unreasonable. Oh, that's impractical. Oh, that's awful, you know. That's unfair. Uh, in the eyes of the world, that could even be dirty. <laughs> um, what's the word? Old school. Or someone who wants to argue that, uh, you know, this is the new world that we are living in and you are old school and you are irrelevant. Uh, sometimes it looks like a spit. But we as Christians, we know that anything that comes out from God's mouth is good. But what did he do? He spat on the ground and he made clay. And when I think about ground, I remember that all of us was, were made out of the earth. You know, Adam was made out of the clay, out of the earth, out of the ground. You with me? Out of the ground, God made man. And out of man, God made woman. So when I think about ground and I think about God spitting on the ground and making clay, He wants us involved. Before the miracle can happen, before the works of God can happen, see, God can do it. But what comes off His mouth uh, is not like just Genesis chapter 1 where He says, let there be light and there was light and there was no man's involvement. But today, very seldom God does that. Very seldom He just says, let there be light and there was light. He, he does that sometimes in our lives. But often, He uses us. And Jesus will actually turn water into wine. Why can't He just bring wine from heaven? He will tell the servants, go and do this. And they had to fill the water pots to the brim. He wants man to be involved. Of course, He can do it on, on His own. But He wants to involve X church He wants to involve you. He wants to involve every church planter here. He wants to involve every homes, homes leader here. Are you still with me? Every elder, every pastor, every leader. He, of course, he can do it himself, but he, he spits on the ground. He speaks to us. Something comes out of his mouth onto clay. And with this clay, you know the next thing is he anointed the man's eyes. So God's spit, or rather what came out of his mouth, onto clay, onto the ground, onto us, making clay and using us now to anoint the eyes of the man. This is very important to understand. Because if we don't know the equation, then miracles don't happen. If we don't know that God wants to use us, you know, it doesn't happen. We're just praying, God, you do it. He says, I will. I'm going to spit on you. I'm going to make clay. Are you okay with that? Not. You know, and sometimes, you know, he doesn't just deal with us in ways that are just happy-go-lucky. You know, sometimes it's tough. And it's like a spit on us. It's like, oh God, are you rejecting me? No, he's actually doing something in your life. And you go like, yeah, but God, why do you spit on me? You know, why, why, why is this so terrible? And sometimes God can actually take testings and turn it into testimonies. And often he does that. So he anoints the eyes of the blind, of those in need, of the communities around us. Amen? Both young and old. So use, apply the anointing he gives to put. What is anointing? This is the summarized version of anointing. To me, it is something of God on us to do something that only God can do through us. So when He gives you anointing, it just means that you have received something from God to do what He wants to do through us. That's what anointing is. Some people, you know, break it down into oil and then they break it down into how the, uh, the, the olive was crushed and how the oil comes out and therefore anointing cannot come through, uh, 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 anointing cannot come without crushing, you know. And, and there's a beautiful study of anointing oil coming from the olive that needs to be crushed. Okay, so uh, anointing comes through crushing and so you can study that for another two days. But for me, in simplicity is, I can do this only because there's anointing on me 
Meaning it comes from Him to do what He wants me to do for Him. And without that anointing, without that gift, without that enabling power from Him, you won't be able to do it. It's as simple as that. And that's why the anointing is so important because it's a gift from God. It's something from God. It, it, actually, it actually belongs to God. That power, that ability, uh, you know, that empowering, it's, it's God's. It came from Him. It now comes on you, the clay, <laughs> so that you can do what He calls us to do. And so that, therefore, you know, that, that's why we preach so well, uh, those of us who are called to preach, because there's an anointing. It's of God. And that's why, you know, we are able to heal people, and able to even uh, give to people and make a difference in their lives. Okay, everybody okay? That there's an anointing. But the anointing must be applied. So he took that clay and applied on the ice. They see, this, this is where sometimes people miss the point. They miss the point that it has to come from God's mouth. They miss the point that they, they are being involved by God, right? Uh, and they miss the point uh, that they are supposed to take the anointing. The anointing is not supposed to just be for you up in the hill somewhere waiting upon God for 40 days. It's, 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 it's not that. Uh, uh, you can wait upon God for 40 days to receive an anointing, but the anointing must be applied. He applied it on the ice. You must go out there and apply it into the community. You have to. Uh, and you must apply. You know, I, I, I thank God that the word is, I mean, it's so practical. No? He didn't make the clear and apply it on his foot or on his fingers. He applied it to the exact place that needs healing. And you're going to find out sometimes where the healing is in Subang Jaya, where the healing is in Kota Kemuning, where, 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 the, where the need is in Nilai, where the need is in SK. And then you take what God has given you and you apply. And I tell you the truth, uh, you are about to witness a miracle. But many times, you know, uh, Christians, uh, you know, don't know that there is this step that they have to use what God gave them and apply it, do something about it on the exact place of need. Everybody okay? How to work the works of God? Number one, out of His mouth. Number two, you get involved because you are the ground, you are the clay He spits on. And then that anointing, what you have received from the Lord, from His mouth, you apply it. Next one. It's got three points. What did he say? What did the blind man say? He told me to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. You will always get clear instructions from the Lord of what to do next. And all you need to do is, come on, obey. And the miracle is bound to happen. There is no other reason greater for X Kota Kemuning than what I just shared with you. You can say, oh, but there's a lot of lost souls in Kota Kemuning. Yes. Kota Kemuning, uh, you know, uh, doesn't have an X church. Yes, okay. You know, uh, a lot of young people there to be rich. Yeah, okay. No, they, you can get, have a lot of reasons why you start X church, wherever you are, but the best reason is this. He spoke. <laughs> and he spoke to you, the clay. And he's taking that and he's applying where the need is. And all you did was, what do you want me to do, Lord? Go and wash in Sil Silom, the pool of, of Siloam. And that, you know the pool of Siloam, the word Siloam is sent. That's what the meaning is, sent. He will send you. Guaranteed. You don't need any other reason. He spoke to me. And now the anointing is upon me to do something. And then you obey. Yes, Lord, I don't understand it. I don't have enough money. You know, I'm building this... Uh, uh, um, new uh, room at the back of my house, you know, for, for 11 years, uh, I couldn't finish it. I finished all the rest, but the renovation cost went up maybe about 50% more than I could afford. So anyway, I, I paid up all for all the renovation and at the back, they had these steel rods, you know, these metal rods still sticking up, you know, like those ugly renovation and un unfinished ones. And for 10 years, I chose not to see, you know, uh, some people saw it and go like, oh, uh, Kenneth, you can't do that. You know? uh, you, you've got to wrap, the, you know, otherwise the, 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 the steel bars will be rusted. So, okay, now and then I go like, okay, and it's 400 ringgit just to put plastic around, uh, uh, special plastic, plastic around. Uh, Pastor Sandra knows this because you know, they told her, you, you know, it's not only ugly, uh, it will rot and all that. So, okay, so uh, only two years ago, I was on my knees in my prayer room and 
I was made to look out of my window, but this time round, I had to look at the reality, right? Sometimes we like to miss out, right? Uh, on what's really going on in our community, you know, <laughs> Muay Thai, you know, don't want to see, like, because, you know, there's so many, so many needs, right? You get, sometimes you get overwhelmed. And then I look out on the day, the Lord t- tells me to look out, and then he says, see this? It's so ugly. I'm your God. You are a pastor. Look, what, what, do you, what, what are your neighbors thinking? Because we, when we see things undeveloped uh, for a few years, uh, we go like, who is the owner, uh? you know? What's happened? Uh? Run out of money or what? You know, you know, we, we say things like that. So ugly, you know? Right? And this is a pastor trying to reach his neighborhood. His God can't even provide for him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, God could have told me this 10 years ago, lah, but he told me this now. You get what I'm trying to say? No? He spat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and many, many times, it's like a spit on a person who can't afford it. We landed on clay. He's about to apply it. Do something about the anointing I, I gave you. So I, I'm like looking out, oh God. And really, not enough money in the bank. But the instruction is, finish it. Finish it. So the obedience came. La. Yes, Lord. If you, if you say so. I don't know where the money is coming from. Seriously. So how many times, guys, we have grown this church over and over again is how? Two words. Yes, Lord. Right? It's always been, yes, Lord. <laughs> it's not rocket science. No, you don't have to go to Bible school for this, no? Yes, Lord. Go wash in Siloam. You know, you're asking a blind man to go and wash in a pool. No? Come on, lah, you know. You, no, I mean, it sounds very cruel. How many of you have ever heard a cruel word from God? A cruel, hey, God. Yeah, it's a bit strong, huh? Yeah. But a miracle is waiting. A miracle is waiting. And so, I started lah. You know how you start? You get the architect, draw it. <laughs> no, without money, you know. And Daniel Selong says, What's oh, sir, I'm just around the corner. You know? I called him because the Holy Spirit said, It's Daniel that will draw for you. So I called Daniel. Daniel says, oh, sir, I'm just around the corner. Isn't he? And then he comes. He knows exactly what I want and then he draws. And then, you know, comes the, who's the contractor? Okay, Ken lah, you know. But Ken, I don't know what he'll do. So uh, Kenya talked to him and he said, Oh, for your boss ah? Okay. He can pay by installment. Just take his time to pay. You know, very few contractors will do that. All right, and I, I say hallelujah, praise God. All right, but how to start? Because you need money to start. He says, just give me thirty thousand deposit, no, and then I'll start. You know, because I got to buy materials. So my testimony to you at this point is a tes- testimony in progress. Uh, someone wrote a check for me, fifty thousand ringgit. All right, the first one. So I say, oh hallelujah, praise God. And then uh, Ken just lately uh, gave us a bill, and it was for another. You know, it was set for part two. And I needed another, another, you know, sum of money. And so, I remember uh, I had fellowshipping with this uh, man. And he's a man of money. And, uh, but as I'm fellowshipping with him, uh, uh, when I'm fellowshipping with him, uh, the Holy Spirit tells me, don't ask him. Don't ask. Okay? Don't ask him. And then I'm like, wow, you know, I'm like, and then he's like, there, you know, very, very friendly conversation, almost like, I'll do anything for you, Kenneth, you know, kind of thing, you know? and, but cannot ask. See, the Holy Spirit sometimes like that, it's pfui. He, you know, it spits on you, spits on you, and then it lands on this clay, and you go like, my word, and you got to apply it. You gotta, if you don't apply it, it won't happen, you see? So you got to apply on, and then, you know, I, I, I walk away, I say goodbye to him, and then, then, then he says to me, hey, I forgot to give you this, and then he gave me a white envelope, right, the whole time. Right? I was with him, didn't ask, because the Holy Spirit said so. So tempting, no? So tempting to ask, uh, brother, can you help me? He gave me a white envelope. I opened a white envelope for another 50,000 ringgit. So half, 50% already. Right? All in one month. Hey, I cried. You know, uh, I've cried so many times through my life, right? Uh, 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 because of how God provided, right? You know? Uh, everything right, and then and then I said I, I I wrote to him. I said, brother, you made me cry again, lah. You know, I I, then I told him. I said, I'm, I I I I wanted to ask you one because I know you know we have this friendship, but you know, the Holy Spirit told me no, you know don't. And then he said, well, the Holy Spirit told me to write you a check. It just it just kind of reminds you. Uh, God knows why not. He knows all our needs, right? He knows all our needs, all our needs. So I thought I've lived, you know, all my stories already, lah. Because I got so many stories of faith, right? I thought I'd live one. Now he gives me fresh ones. 
God, God always wants to give you fresh stories. Always. No matter whether you're, whether you're 53, 63, you know, 73, uh, you know, you continue, you keep doing it, uh, guys. Formula doesn't change one with God. Instruct, obey. So what did he really say? Uh, what did he really say? Let me, let me look at it again. Uh, okay. So the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, look, look at how simple his testimony is. Ladies and gentlemen, he put clear my eyes. I wash, I see. <laughs> you, you want a different testimony? You, you want to get more creative with your testimony? No need. No need. He put clay on my eyes. I wash. I see. Hello. Huh? As go to the morning. He spoke. I did. It is. Huh? Amen. Ask church. Cheer us. Cyber giant. No, continue. keep on going. Hey, you know, and let your people see, hey, this is simple. Huh? Children also can learn and do it. Amen. And, and it's going to continue until the Lord comes back. Right? I wash. Why, why did I wash? He told me to go ahead and wash. Huh? So I, I follow. Huh? And now I see. The Lord did it before. He did it again, again. He's just, he just did it for me. Also, he'll do it for you again and again. What else? As I, as I close, the theology determines the testimony. Many times uh, our theology is the one that stops us. And the theology uh, you know, that Jesus was trying to teach us uh, brought the man a testimony. But the theology of the Pharisees was still bound. And that's why they couldn't see. You know, it's funny uh, that the Pharisee <laughs> is asking the man who's blind. You know, they are, they are the ones who can't see, although they're called Pharisee. Yeah? So the Pharisees focus on, listen, listen what they focus on. Huh? You can read it again for yourself. Why it was. Hey, why, uh, why do you see? Why can you see? Uh, who made you see? Uh, you know, they, 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 they focus on the blind man's sin. You are a sinner, like you teach us what? You know? And then they focus on why it could not be. It cannot be. Jesus can't heal you. He's a sinner. He healed on Sabbath. So you see what they focus on? This is their th theology. Their theology is always look at sin. People sin. Why it cannot be done? Why it cannot be done? Why it cannot be done? Right? And I tell you, this church has got to look beyond that. Don't keep looking at why, uh, you know, why, why my leader did this, why my pastor did this. Uh, no, stop. Enough. Because miracles won't happen if you continue to look at it. And then you want questions answered. You want your dissatisfaction answered. Enough. Because I tell you what uh, the blind man focused on, what he was before Jesus and what he was after Jesus. That's it. Before Jesus, I was blind. After Jesus, I see. Come on. Let's get on with it, like, guys. Let's focus on the right thing. This is our theology. We focus on the Lord. Amen? We focus on growth. We focus on, you know, seeing people saved, set free, delivered, healed. Amen? Come on, like, guys. There's, there's only very little time to do a lot of work. So, theology, you know. Hey, is God looking at a person's sin? He's not. He's looking at a person's salvation. Theology, your, your theology will stop you from your testimony or it will give you a testimony. Okay, let's, let's focus. The Pharisees admitted they did not know who Jesus was. True. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. And were therefore bound by a theology that was totally opposite to what and who God really was. Their theology was opposite. No? Cannot be like he's a sinner, like he healed on Sabbath. Like how can he be of God? What kind of theology is that? Right? And that was what they were bound by and they never lived a breakthrough life. They were actually unqualified even to rep represent Him. They didn't even really know God. But a man who was blind once and now see was so simple in his testimony of God, wasn't it? Uh, he said, oh, you don't know where he's from? He said, oh, it's a marvellous thing. You know, he mocked them. You know? The blind man mocked them. Right? He said, huh? oh, I see. Oh, well... Whatever it is, whether he's a sinner or not, I just know this. Once I was blind, now I. Okay, you can argue about theology all you want. You can argue about this and that. This is the testimony. This is the track record of ex-church also. That we have continued to see God move. Amen? And continue to see God faithful to us. And we have continued to grow. And we are continually doing well. In spite and despite of, you know, maybe one or two dissatisfied people. That's Okay. I mean, in Jesus' time also, there were many. <laughs> all right? So many. And John 666, you know, is uh, all left him except the 12. And then he told the 12, were you not the ones I chose? It's all right. Amen? 
Uh, we work with what God has given us. So I just want to bless you and pray that many more miracles will happen in your lives. All right? It's simple, guys. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. What, 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 what was it? He says, he put clay on my eyes. I wash, I see. Keep it simple. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you've been blessed by this video, please share this with a friend and bless them too. Do like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Wishing you all good health and God's grace and favour to be upon all of you. God bless you. See you next time.